All right, let's get started with the measure-by-measure -measure breakdown of Rebel Raid. This is the tune as I've learned it from Uma Peters. She learned it from Adam Hurt. We're kind of sending it on down the chain, and now it's your turn to get in on the action. Uh, this one's in the key of G, but we're using an alternate tuning. We're not using the standard open G tuning. Instead, we're using what I call an F tuning and capoing that all up a whole step. If you're not familiar with this already, we'll do a quick breakdown. So from the fourth string down, D, G, C, D. Uh, and then the fifth string would be tuned down a whole step to an F. This is if we're working without the capo, just working in the standard open position here. Uh, we're going to take that, that F tuning, we're going to capo up to the second fret, raise this fifth string back up to its uh, old familiar position of a G note. Assuming we're in the right tuning now, capoed up properly, uh, we can move forward. Before we jump into the tune though, we need to know that in this tuning, it's pretty imperative that you understand where your primary chord shapes are. Uh, so our primary chord shapes, here's what the one chord looks like. From there you can see our four chord right here. Nice easy shift from the one to the four shape there, see that? Our five chord looks like our E minor chord did an open standard G tuning. And then finally we're gonna add in an additional chord here. Here's our relative minor, here's our E minor. And we have, for that we have our, the second fret on both the second and third strings fretted. The rest are open. Just get those shapes under your fingers. Um, that'll help you out a lot, uh, especially conceptually as we move forward with the measure by measure breakdown of this tune. All right, without further ado, we'll get started. Let's take a look at measure number one. Just as I warned you, we're going to start from this primary chord shape, the one chord shape here. Looks like this. And here's how that measure is going to look and sound. Alright, so you see we start with a nice strum on that one chord. That's our boom note. For the chicka we have a phantom stroke. So we have boom, chicka, and then a little drop thumb roll as we work our way up the neck. So here's the whole measure. Alright, we'll be seeing that again, so let's go ahead and move on to the second measure here. Again, still working out of this one chord shape, we're going to do a little pull off right in the beginning, open up that first string, but otherwise we're just going to be holding this shape. Pull off, chicka, drop thumb, chicka. shape basically just stays there. We did open up that first string, but otherwise we're still holding these guys up here. That's going to make it easy to get the third measure going because once again we're going to repeat what we did in the first measure. So all I got to do is drop that finger back down on the third fret first string and do a repeat of what we did in measure one. I've already covered that, so we don't need to dwell there. We'll move on to measure four. This is going to start off just like we did in measure two, and then it's going to take a little twist here. And now we jump to the E minor, so we get the first half of the measure looking familiar. We get an E minor chord there, so we have boom, chick, uh, got a little phantom stroke in there as well. All right, I'm kind of dwelling on the second half of that measure. Let me play you the whole thing. Now, if you're paying close attention, keeping score at home, you might be wondering, uh, wait a minute, Ryan, you told me that this was my E minor shape with the second fret on both the second and third strings. But in the tab here, it's just the second fret on the third string and everything else is open. 
that's just a little variation, but I wanted to start you from the E minor chord proper here. Uh, but this is the way Uma showed me this, was just this note here and the rest open. And I guess if you think about it, if you want to analyze that from a music theory perspective, it uh, looks like we're just turning that E minor chord into an E minor seventh chord, uh, which will function the same within a tune. So you could either do the E minor as I showed you earlier. I do that a lot where I actually am fretting the second fret on both the second and third strings at that point. Or you could do it as written in the tab. It's up to you. You'll see me do it both ways. I recommend you do the same. Get used to doing uh, either variation and switch back and forth as you see fit in any given uh, musical scenario. Let's move forward. The next measure, measure five, is once again a repeat. Same thing we did in measure one and measure three. So we'll move on to measure six. This is almost a straight repeat of measure two, except the last couple notes. Really just that last note. Where instead of just kind of ending up on that open fifth string like we did in the second measure, this time we're going to slide that second fret note up to the third fret. Again, you might see me in the performances and even here in the breakdown uh, do a variation where instead of sliding from the second to the third, the way I learned it from Uma, sometimes, a lot of times these days, I'll just hammer on. Slightly different effect, same melodic result but a slightly different uh, effect and expression there it's again it's up to you how you want to deal with it figure out what works best for you what sounds best to you otherwise that should be a pretty familiar measure to you at this point so we'll move forward and see where that measure is leading us to and that's the seventh measure and that's where we jump and grab hold of this five chord shape um, I actually use the, this fingering here you might want to emulate my fingering First finger here, third finger here, because we're going to employ the second finger to grab this third fret here in a second. Here's how this measure looks and sounds. Okay, so we're just, we have that chord shape, the uh, five chord shape there. We're going boom. Boom. We're doing a, we're striking the second string here and then an alternate string pull off on the first string. Then we're dropping the thumb and grabbing that third fret note there on the third string. One more time on that measure. And you can tell that's kind of leaving us hanging melodically speaking. So let's go ahead and do the eighth measure. And hear how this resolves going back to our home chord shape. See that? So the previous measure. Now I'm dropping. Right into that one chord. Once you give that a little bit of practice, you'll see how smoothly those you can kind of transition between those two shapes using this arrangement. One more time on that eighth measure. So of course that's the first ending. We would repeat the, the A part there and then after that second time through we would jump to the second ending. And it's basically the same thing but we got a little pick up into our B part. So here's the second ending. So the only difference there is the last couple of notes there were hammering on from the second to the third. That was our ninth measure, the second ending of the A part. That takes us to the B part. Let's take a look at that first measure of the B part. That'll be the tenth measure in your tab. Alright, this might seem a little difficult to you at first, depending on your skill level, but we'll break it down. It's 
pretty straightforward once you uh, break it down and give each part a little bit of concentration and uh, patient practice. Um, it'll make more sense as we go. So we have a boom chicka if you want to look at just the first half of the measure where we have the boom note on the open second. The chick is a phantom stroke. The uh is a drop thumb note on that third fret, third string once again. That's already a familiar note for us. And notice my left hand, I don't take all my fingers off of the fretboard. I, I hold this chord and work around it. So this uh, second finger, my middle finger here, is grabbing the third frets when needed on either the third or the fourth string. Uh, so again, here's the first half of this measure. Boom. Uh, and then the next half. It's pretty familiar from our previous measures. The only catch is we have another phantom stroke. But if you remember that we're holding this one chord shape and working from that, everything should kind of fall in place. Makes sense. And once your fingers get the hang of it, uh, you'll be feeling pretty good here. That's the 10th measure. Let's take a look at the 11th. Again, you'll see in the tab a slide, and that's great. Um, I have kind of resorted, after playing this for a little while, to doing a hammer-on again instead of the slide. I like it because I can kind of just stay in position there and kind of work around that chord shape. You can do the same. When you do the slide, you just leave position for a second. You leave the chord shape for a second. Uh, you might like the result of that approach better. Um, I like to do the hammer on, so I'll do it as written here one more time. It's measure 11. Now I'll do it as I tend to play it these days, which is with a hammer on. As opposed to a slide there. Now we're on to measure 12. In measure 12, we're starting on our four chord where we ended the previous measure. We're doing an alternate string pull off. Doing some inside drop thumbing. We're also clearing that second string in time before we strike it so we can get that open string. It's the first half of the measure. And the second half, it's really familiar. We've worked our way back down to the one chord shape. I'll play that a little slowly. You can watch all the any spot you need to watch to uh, get a good, clear understanding of what's happening here. Crucial measure there. That takes us to the first ending of the B part. last two notes of course are your pickup notes. I'm going to take you back into the B part once more. Anyway, one more time on that measure, 13. For the 14th measure, we're going to just repeat the same thing we did in the 13th measure. This is our second ending. Same thing. No need to to explain any further, our third ending, everything's going to be the same as the previous two endings. And then instead of hitting our pickup notes, we'll just resolve with that chicka there. So here is the 15th measure, our third ending. I'll play the whole tune for you as written in the tab, nice and slowly, and you'll hear how that B part just repeats three times and doesn't resolve till the very last ending. Here we go, nice and slowly. Mm -hmm. 